doggone it, you're still the best looking gal I ever saw. You ain't as young as you used to be. And a set of legs like them, they ain't nobody gonna pay no attention to that age. Big moony eyes and that little turn up nose. That shiny black hair and that big black bushy tail. Doggone it, you quit worrying so much anyhow. Old Jim ain't gonna let him take you away from here. I got work to do. I can't stand here complimenting you all day. Hey, Jim. They expect you back this soon. How'd the trial turn out? I didn't wait to find out. You didn't? Jim, you mean you just got up and walked out? Yeah. Too close and stuffy in that courtroom for me. You feel the same way, don't you, old gal? Hmm? There. Go and visit your friend. Come on. You know, Jim, that, that judge could rule against you. Regardless of how he rules, Whipple is not going to get that mare. And that's all that counts. Look at her, will you? She's got a secret we don't know. <laughs> sure and fine she did. Why give me a fine coat? She's done that quite a few times over here, hasn't she? Sure I have. It's getting to be an old lady, though. This is the last coat she's going to have. It's going to be the most special coat in the world. You know that niece of mine I told you about over in Grass Valley? Well, I ain't never met her, of course. I feel like I know her, the way you've talked about her the last 15 years. I guess I do talk about her quite a bit. Well, she has a little boy, three years old. A boy that age ought to have a coat of his own. I'm gonna take the mare over to Grass Valley. I wanna be with her when the coat is born. Brings you out this way, Peach. You doing a little electioneering? I'm always doing that, especially in enemy territory. This time I'm here on official business. Should have stayed around, Acton. The judge handed down his decision five minutes after you walked out on him. Pete, how'd it turn out? Here, read it. You read it, Hoss. The judge awarded the mayor to Mr. Wilkins.
had your day in court, you both had your say. Now, the mayor belongs to Whipple, and that's that. You all know the mayor belongs to me. I made a deal to buy a bunch of wild horses from you, and the mayor is part of the herd. That mayor was never part of the herd. And you know it! Oh, wait, come on, Jim! Hold it, hold it! Come on, Jim! That's not what the judge said. Jim, come here a minute, you hard hit I got a plan. Just calm down a minute. Look, Pete, I ain't got no money on me, and I, I know Jim ain't. But maybe we could go get Paul and buy the mare back, huh? Well, I'd say that's up to Whipple. She's not for sale. I'm keeping her for myself. Whipple, you touch that bear, I'll kill you. How about it, Sheriff? The law say I got a right to collect what's mine? That's what the law says. Give me a rope. All right, she's all yours. That's all I ask. way to do everything, and you're trying to do it the wrong way. And I guarantee you we'll get this all settled. That's good advice, Jim. I'm warning you. Let it be. Well, that's that. Now that I'm up here, I might as well see your dad. Do a little campaigning. I don't think it'll do much good, Pete. He's gonna support old Roy. Well, that's exactly why I want to talk to him. No sense wasting my time and all those good folks I already know are gonna support me. <laughs> want to ride along? No, no, thank you, Pete. You find Paul at Spencer Canyon. You know how to get there. Yeah. Stick around here, though, Jim. All right, suit yourself. Yeah. I'm not going to give her up. Now, look, Jim, don't you start nothing here. You let me handle this. I'll talk to Paul, and we'll get her back. When? That mare's been with me for 18 years. She's not just another piece of horse flesh for a whipple to trade off. Look, Jim, you go on back to the house and stay there. I'll go find Paul, and we'll figure out something. I got to get her back. You understand? Yes, Dad Brennan, I understand. <laughs> need the gun, Mr. Whipple. I'm not looking for trouble. I just want to talk to you. Don't start anything, Acton. You already lost one lawsuit. You lay a hand on me, I'll swear on a warrant. Be reasonable, Mr. Whipple. To you, a horse is just a horse. Well, that's your business. With me, it's different. It's over and done with. I know you got a good market for those uh, wild horses I round up. I'll ask Ben Cartwright to give me some time off. I'll get you 50 head. That's five times as much as the mare's worth to you. Is it a deal, Mr. Whipple? I said it's over and done with. Come on. Don't pull on her that way. Let go of that rope, Acton. She's not used to being treated that way. Well, she better well get used to it. <laughs> Better be nice to you. Ah, you go get yourself that warrant. But like I told you before, we're not taking this mare.
All right, old girl. Let's go home. I'm not going away so soon, old girl. But I just can't understand a judge handing down a decision like that. Jim always used that mare for rounding up his wild horses. Everybody knew that. Well, why did Jim have to beat up on Whipple in the first place, and then on top of that, get up and walk out of the court room? Because he thought he could get away with it. Well, there's no point in talking about it. As soon as Sam Whipple gets over being mad, I'll offer him such a good price for that mare, he'll sell it back. He better. Boy, Jim carried on. You think that was the only mare in the country? Well, he always was kind of a strange one anyway. Boys, take them horses, put them in the breaking corral. Cartwright? Thought much about the election? Well, uh, yes, yes, people. Yes. In fact, I have. Well, I'm glad to hear that. You know, a lot of people are backing me, Mr. Cartwright. Influential people in town, men that you know and respect. Well, I appreciate that, uh, Keith, but uh, I think Roy Coffey's made a, made a fine sheriff for us. Oh, well, sure, but times change, and Roy's getting a little bit too old to change with him. Huh? Now, what I plan to do is reorganize... Hasn't anybody told that brother of yours that there's other ways of riding a horse except in a dead run? Well, it's Sam Whipple. I found him dead alongside the road near Big Fork. He'd been shot. Did he have Jim Acton's mare with him? No, just his own saddle horse. Joe, riding to town. Tell Sheriff Coffee to me it's a big fork. Right. I can handle this myself, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah, I'm sure you can, but Roy is still our sheriff. felt about that mare, and knowing how outdated he was, I should never have left him here alone. I still say Jim's no killer. Whipple must have pulled a gun on him or something. He had to have a good reason. I mean, Jim should have, should have known that I could have bought that mare back for him. Seems to me you're wasting an awful lot of time. It seems to me you're awfully anxious, Pete. I'm not in the habit of feeling sorry for killers. Pete's right. There's no sense of giving him any more of a head start than he's already got. I can handle it alone if you want me to, Sheriff. I can bring him in. How? Draped over a saddle? Like you brought in the last three? I did my job, didn't I? Roy? Boys and I know this part of the country pretty well. He wants to ride with you? Just fixing to ask you, Ben. I never thought I'd see the day I'd be out chasing a friend with a rifle. You don't want him to get away with it, do you? See him get shot, neither of you. That's a question you didn't have to ask.
I hear him, girl. I'm going to make it as easy on you as I can. She hadn't done that, Ben. When you chase a man that's just running, that's one thing. But when you chase a man that's turning around and bushwhack you... Oh, Roy, come on, don't be silly. You don't want to hit something, either hit it. Jim Acton's the best rifle shot I know. I hate to leave it, girl. That's as close to home as I ever got. Frank! Yeah, Pete? Flank him on the right side. All right, Pete. They'll never find old Jim up there, Joe. Yeah, well, maybe that climb will cool Pete off a little bit. Yeah, like this. Remember the time we thought we had that old stallion trapped up there and old Jim rode up? Yeah, I remember he started laughing at us. Said that old stain and let us think we had him trapped, and while we were breaking our necks climbing up there, he'd sneak out the back way. Yeah. Hey, Joe. You thinking what I am? You bet I am. Now, where in the devil they think they're going? Jim. That was a rock you heard over there. The oldest trick in the world, Joe. Now I'm sorry I ever taught it to you. How are you, little Joe? That's the second oldest trick. We'll shake hands later. You too, our huh, horse. I should have known. You got to thinking about that stallion we thought we had trapped up there that time? That's right, Jim. You boys have long memories. You gave us a lot to remember, Jim. Yeah. We had good times together. And yeah, we're gonna have a lot more as soon as we get this mess cleaned up. Look, Jim, Paul and us know as well as we're alive that you didn't just shoot Whipple down for no cause. What happened back there? A man shoots at you. You shoot back. You have no time to think. We can understand that, but now you've had time to think. That's right, Jim. Think about that niece. You told us how much she thinks of you. How's she gonna feel having a fugitive for an uncle? I thought about it. Then you come on back with us now. I've been thinking about that stallion we... We tried to trap up there. 
I know how you are, horse. I know that heart of yours. And you're still little Joe. You don't show it, but uh, you're just the same. That stallion. Even if we had caught him, neither one of you would have put a rope around him. You knew he had to be free. Dad buried Jim. We, we can't let you go. Try to make it easy on everybody. Didn't take his rifle. Plan on letting him escape? Well, you can step aside now. I'm taking him. Are you real sure you can handle it, Pete? Yeah, I'm real sure. I'm no particular friend of his. Tired. Can we rest here a little while, please? All right, I guess all the horses can use some rest. Go ahead. Yeah. I talk with him? You sure can, Ben, but I don't think it's going to do you no good. He's a drifter. He's born to it. And that kind of man just don't change. Frank, treating that killer like he was something special. Hmm, maybe that's because they've been friends for a long time. I sure don't like the way Roy's listening to those Cartwrights. For all we know, they could be planning on letting him escape. Oh, Pete, I find that kind of hard to believe. Well, then don't believe it. But I know my obligation to the law, and I know I don't want to get myself killed the way Whipple did. Now, you can follow my lead or string along with Roy. It doesn't much matter which. From now on, you better watch your back. Well, the way you tell it, Jim. Sam Whipple, uh, that was self-defense. That's the way it was, man. But he's going to believe it. Well, I do, for one. Thanks. But you won't be on the jury. What chances a drifter like me got? Same chances any other man would have. I'm trying to give you some good advice, Jim. Will you take it? Depends what you expect me to do. Number one, I expect you to stop trying to stand up against the world alone. Number two, I expect you to go back there and face the music. And let them lock me up? Look at that. Beautiful sight, isn't it? Yeah. It's real beautiful. I've told you more than once, you can have a piece of it if you want to settle down. Never could, Ben. I get an itching, and I gotta move. Even country like that, you hold your fingers up like you're looking through bars, and you can spoil it. You won't listen, will you, Jim? You're going to run again. I have to. I'm afraid the only end to it will be a, a bullet. It's the idea. Just removing the temptation. You think that was necessary, huh? I think so. You looked at the sun lately? Yeah, I've seen it. Well, if we hang around here much longer, we won't be back before dark. 
You like herding prisoners after dark? No, I don't. That's why we're staying overnight at the Ponderosa. You're sort of treating him like a guest, aren't you? A guest of the Nevada Territory. And you aren't even going to tie him up. Now, there's six of us and one of him. That's pretty fair odds, isn't it? <laughs> well, now that you mention it, I guess it is. something. Last trouble you're gonna cause me. You put that gun down! Broken leg, Ben. I have never hurt a horse in my life. You did it, Jim! Oi! Trust me with a gun. Go ahead, Ben. That's that gun I'll blow you into. There's an unwritten law around here. A man takes care of his own horse. Mister, I don't go by unwritten laws. That's one thing a man never gets used to, Ben. Jim, just answer me one question. What makes you so dead burn hard headed stubborn? Something I gotta do, horse. Well, fine, but you keep throwing stunts like the one you just pulled, and it's gonna make your case even rougher for you. Besides, whatever you got to do can't be so important, it won't wait. Not so, Hoss. You know that niece of mine I've been telling you about? She's not my niece at all. She's my daughter. And her little boy is my grandson. Well, I'll be doggone. That's why after my wife died, I... I thought it would be better if I left my daughter with my brother and his wife. They've done a good job raising her. Much better than I would have done. She thinks I'm her uncle. Better this way. She knows I break horses. Work on a ranch. Drift. Sweet girl. I used to hold her on my knee and... tell her all kinds of stories. Oh, Jim, you... You got a lot of good living to catch up on as soon as you get out. I'm already out. I'm 
going to stay that way. Boss, a man's got a right to give his grandson a present, hasn't he? I'm going to give him a coat. I'm going to take the mayor across the mountains. Nobody can do it for me. This is something I got to do for myself. You understand, horse? Yes. And that's just the trouble. And knowing you the way I do, I understand you. I knew you would. All right, Jim, it's time to go. You can take the saddle off that dead horse and put her on your mare and ride her back. Come on. I think I'll tie his hands. We got a lot of rough country between here and the ranch. How's he gonna ride with his hands tied? Just don't trust him, that's all. Oh, come on, Pete. That mare he's owns 18 years old. He's gonna outrun somebody? Well, all right. If anything happens, you Cartwrights are responsible. Remember that. You let him escape. You deliberately let him escape, and you said that mare couldn't run. Well, I didn't think she could. You didn't think. Ben, I've gone along with you as far as I could, but deliberately let him escape. Now, Roy, this escape. is not deliberate. Now, don't yell at me. You've been more of a hindrance than you have a help ever since we started. Well, would you look who's talking? It was your idea to bring these Cartwrights along, not mine. Well, they've had you in their pocket ever since the day you were elected. Well, I'll have a lot to tell when I get back to town, and Frank here will back me up. Make up your mind to it, old man. You're through. Maybe your, uh, your friends, the Cartwrights, will give you a little piece of ground to build a cabin on. Now, I'm taking over. Ben, I'm, I'm sorry I lost my temper. Roy, if you let Pete take over, man's life will be at stake. He's not taking over. Did you see that beautiful old gal play that fence? Yes, I saw him. Try to lose us in them rocks. If he gets over the top of that hill and into the woods on the other side, we'll never get him. I'm gonna take Frank and cut him off. We're waiting for him when he comes over the top. Yeah, there's a trail that goes around the other side. Go ahead, Pete. going to blame you for getting old, girl. But ten years ago, you would have carried me over the top of that hill like you had wings. Angel wings. The 
It appears like the mare gave out on him. No, she didn't give out. He just doesn't want to cripple her in the rocks. Hey, Pa? Huh? I've been thinking what you, what you said about the trail. There was a big landslide up there last winter. There ain't no way for Pete to get around that way. I know. in on them now. Doggone it, Joe. Where does right end and wrong begin? All he ever wanted to be was free. Look at him now. Breaking his lungs and his heart. Just like that, that wild stallion I chased. Run him plumb into the ground. When I finally caught him, I, I couldn't more put a rope around his neck and I could rise and fly. Come on. I want you to understand. It's me they're after. But I don't want you to get hurt. You go back with the herd. They'll take care of you. And uh, you give me a fine colt, you understand? I'll come back to see you in the spring. Never make it through there? Yeah. Those cartwrights, they knew that slide was there. Come on. You look at that, she's gonna try to climb it with him. All oh, that mare will kill herself. The mayor won't make it, but Jim will, and I can't let that happen. Wait, wait, Roy. Let me try something. Jim! Jim! Look behind you! The mayor! Go back, Nero. Go back! Go back. Go back, Nero. You can't climb up there. You'll hurt yourself. Go on back! Go on! Jim! Jim! Come on down, Jim! that cold? Go on back. Hey, Jim. Jim! I can't promise you anything, but the boys and I will help you all we can. You know that. Jim, you're gonna kill that mare! Son, what you wanna do, Jim? Kill her! Is that what you raised her for, to see her kill herself? Is a dead mare the kind of present you want for that grandson, Jim? Grandson? Yeah. You know that niece he's always talking about? Yeah? It's his own daughter. Go on back, girl. Go on. Please go back, will you? You want to go back, do you? Well, I can understand that. You've been with me all your life. All right. I go. 
ahorita. I guess you're more important than I am. You always did know how to get the best of me, didn't you? <laughs> All right, come on. It's coming down, Roy. He was right out where he could have got a shot at you. He didn't even have a gun. Just a mistake. I've always been a good deputy, Roy. Hoss, listen to me, Hoss. We've always got along together. Oh, but... Pete. Little Joe, look. Jo left in you, too. Yeah. You have a nice, pretty coat from Jim here. I hate to leave you pinned up in here, Dad and Bernie, but if I let you go, you'll run back out there in them wild ones. I gotta know where you are. Oh, Joe. Huh? Turn her loose, Hoss. Let her loose? Oh, Paul, I never would catch her. I gotta take her up to Grass Valley tomorrow. Well, I, uh, I got a letter from Jim's daughter. A letter? I'd like to read you part of it. It says here, uh, my uncle was always a free man, Mr. Cartwright. And I want to remember him that way. I know how much he loved that mayor. And how he always thought of her as something as free as himself. I was never able to do much for him when he was alive. I want to do something for him now. I want you to turn his mare loose. spring, when that herd comes back to the high country, that mayor's gonna have a little black coat to show up. <laughs> yeah. And I'll bet you I know a little grandson that's gonna make mighty happy, too. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, let's go home. Yeah. yeah. 